Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how I created this floating product image in Photoshop. If you missed the in-studio tutorial on how I shot this image, be sure to check that out first. I've linked it for you below. But this is what we're gonna be working with today. This is actually the before image and this is our after. So grab some coffee, grab something to sip on. I'm gonna take you through step by step and show you how I pulled this entire image together. All right, so I have imported all of our images here into Lightroom. And as you can see, I've actually applied a color filter to each of our images. I just did that by selecting an individual image and then choosing one of these color filters here. And I just did that depending on the color of the serial in the image. So what this is gonna do is just basically make it easier for us to keep things organized. And I'm going to work on one color at a time in Photoshop. So that will just make it easier for us to select each individual color as we work through these. So if we come on down to this image here, this is just the one that we captured with just the product in here. We hadn't taken any of the serial images yet. And I just went through and made some super basic edits. We're really gonna bring this together in Photoshop, but I usually like to start with some simple edits in Lightroom, just so that I can get a good idea of how the final image and the colors are going to look. So I just warmed this up a bit by changing the temperature. And then you can see these adjustments that I made here to the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And then I almost always add some vibrance just to make those colors pop a little bit more. And then I also like to play around with this tone curve section and just kind of play with these sliders to really help brighten up the image and add a little more contrast between the different colors. So with all of our edits ready to go on this image, I'm just gonna make sure I have our image here selected. I'm going to hit copy. This is gonna give us a pop-up just asking what portions of the image that we want to copy over based on the changes that we made. I'm just gonna do check all for this, hit copy. And then if we slide on down to the first image here, I'm gonna hit paste and it's gonna paste all of those settings onto this image. And then still with this first one selected, I'm just gonna hold the shift key on my keyboard, click through to the last one so that they're all highlighted. And then we're just gonna hit sync. And that's gonna synchronize all of those changes really quickly across every single image. All right, so now we're ready to import our first set of images into Photoshop, just based on the color serial that we're going to be working with. So I did label our plain jar and lid photos as green as well. And then we'll just import those with all of the green serial pieces at the same time. Photoshop gets a little testy if you try to import too many images at once. So this is part of the reason why we're just gonna stick to one color at a time. So I'm just going through, holding down the control key and selecting all of the green filtered images. And then I'm gonna right click. We're going to come up to edit in, and then we're gonna select Adobe Photoshop. So that did take a minute or two for Photoshop to load all of these in, um, but we have, you can see all of our images up here on separate tabs. And then if you click on this set of arrows, you can kind of see how all your images are listed here. So we're gonna start with our base image here. And what I want to do is using the pen tool, I'm going to make a selection just around our product here so that we can separate it from the background. Then we're gonna come on over to, we'll find our image that has the lid in there and do the same with the lid. Paste the lid on there, get that kind of positioned the way we want it to. And I'll also show you guys how I replace this background so that we can get some nice even lighting and a smooth color. I've got my pen tool selected. I'm gonna zoom in pretty close here so that I can clearly see the edges of our product. And then I'm just on the background layer right now. So all I'm gonna do is just pick a selection where I wanna start. And then I'm just going to kind of click along the edge. And then if you place a point in the center, you can hold the control or command key, click and drag that to line it up with the edge of your product. So I'm just going to keep repeating this until we have gone all around the edges. And you kind of just get the hang of where you want to place each of these points the more that you do this. But this is kind of my go-to method where I just place two points and then if I need to go around a curve like here, I'll just go somewhere in the middle, control or command, and then just click and drag to line that up nicely. And then if you ever need to adjust a point that you've made, again, hold control or command and you can click and drag that as well. So I'm just gonna come down here and try to make as few points as possible along these straight lines. 
and then just accommodate for these small little curves that we have as well. All right, so I've about finished making the selection here. So just wanted you guys to see what happens once we get to the end. So we're just gonna connect back to the first point that we made here. And if at this point you need to adjust to a curve, you can still click in between those points and make that adjustment. So then let's just zoom out. And then I'm gonna right click inside of our selection here. We're gonna go to make selection and then click OK. And now you can see we have the marching ants around our product. So we want to separate this from our background. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this, but just including the selection that we've made by hitting Control or Command J on my keyboard. And as you can see, that has now created a new layer up here with just the product selected. So if I turn off my background here, you can see we just have our floating product right there. So that's exactly what we want. Okay, so now we wanna go ahead and do the same thing by isolating our lid from the background. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this image here. And all we're gonna do is now make a selection around the edge here of our lid. And the pen tool, it's kind of hard to see with this color here. So if your pen tool is ever kind of hard to see where the edges are up against your product, you can click on this settings gear up here and just change the color of the path for your pen tool. So yeah, that makes it a whole lot easier with the yellow. So I'm just gonna quickly go around our lid and then I'll show you guys how we can isolate this and then paste it onto the image where we have isolated the product. All right, so same thing here. I'm just going to right click and make this into a selection. And then once you see the marching ants with your background layer selected, hit Control or Command J. Now we've got our lid on its own layer. So I'm just going to hit Control C to copy. And then let's go back to the image where we isolated our product here. I'm gonna paste that in. And now with this layer selected, and let's rename these so that we know what we're working with, we'll call this product and we'll call this lid. So with the lid layer selected, hit control or command T for transform. And now we can drag and position this lid wherever we want. So it's not super important right now that you place it exactly where you want it. I think once we get the cereal kind of flying all over the place, we'll have a better idea of where we want this lid to be. But for now, I think that looks pretty good. So you can either hit enter on the keyboard or click this check mark up here. Now let's go ahead and get this background replaced just so that we can get a better idea of what this is going to be looking like without all of these distractions in the way. So with our background layer selected, I'm gonna come on down to this icon and select the solid color option. And so it's gonna bring up this color picker where we can just slide around and see what color we want to use for our background. Um, so I'm thinking I want to go with something maybe like a brighter turquoise, light blue, something like that. And again, this is one of those things you can come back through and double click on this layer and change the color at any point. So if once the cereal is in here, we want to make any adjustments to this, we can definitely do so. But for now, let's go with this nice light blue color. And now I think we're ready to start adding in some flying cereal pieces. So let's... Let's start in order here. I'm gonna come on over. I think this was the lid photo. Yep. So once you're done with an image, I just like to close out. We don't need to save that because all we were doing was copying a portion of that over to our image. And then I'm just gonna come on up here to the top of the list and just work in order of these. So what I want to try for selecting each of these serial pieces, instead of using the pen tool, if I can save some time, I'm gonna see if I can make this work with the object selection tool. So I like to have this in lasso mode so that I can just kind of draw a circle around the area that I want to isolate. And then if you change this dropdown to cloud, you're going to get more detailed and accurate results for your selection. So I'm gonna zoom in here. And all we want to pull from this particular image is this green piece of cereal. So I'm just gonna draw a rough kind of circle around this give it a second to do its thinking, and let's see what that selection looks like. Hopefully we don't need to use the pen tool. Ah, see, it's not perfect. And in this, this case, this is why I like to use the pen tool because 
you don't have to wonder if it's going to be accurate or not. And what we can try is I'm gonna hold the Alt key, which is going to subtract certain areas from your selection. And I'm just going to circle around this area of the background that we don't want and see if that works any better. Okay, yeah, that actually worked. So now that this is selected, it's already made into a selection with our marching ants here. So same procedure as before, click Command or Control J. And now we have a serial piece isolated in its own layer. So let's copy that. I'm gonna close this image because we're done with it. And then we're gonna go back over here to our original image that we're working on. So I'm gonna select this lid layer because I do want this piece of cereal to be on top. I'm gonna to press Control V. And now we have our piece of cereal. This is where it gets fun because there is so much that you can do to get creative with these individual pieces. So we're just gonna call this, I'm probably not gonna rename all of these layers because there are gonna be a lot of flying cereal pieces. But with this layer selected, I'm gonna again do my Control or Command T, which is going to allow me to transform this. And so this is where you start to get creative with the placement of your cereal. This is why it's not super important where the serial is hovering when you're actually shooting the image. It's just more important that you capture it from some different angles, see how you can get it to catch the light. So from here, we can just drag and you can see we're just repositioning where we want it to land. You can also drag at the corners or the sides here if you want to resize anything. So I think we're just gonna kind of keep this at its original size for now. And we're just gonna place it kind of above the product. And then once you're happy with that placement, you can hit enter. Now this is the portion of this image where it is going to become quite time consuming. So what I'm gonna do is just continue going through making selections of every single piece of cereal for each color that we're featuring. And I'm going to paste those individually on to our image here. And then I'll pick back up with you guys as we kind of place everything together. And then I'll show you how we can, you know, smooth out our product, brighten things up a bit and really tie everything together. All right, our layers are getting a little crowded here, so I'm going to put these into groups. Let's select all of the red ones and hit the group folder here, and then we're just gonna call this reds, and then I'm gonna do the same with the greens, just to keep things a little more organized. All right, that was, a, uh, that was a commitment. That took over an hour to get all these here, um, but we're looking a little hectic right now. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna turn off all of our color groupings for right now and just work with one at a time so that we can kind of focus on placing each color before we bring in the next. Um, but one thing that I do want to try before we start placing things is I wanna see how this will look with a gradient background. So I'm going to add a new layer above our color fill layer here. And then let's just select some colors for our gradient. I'm thinking we could kind of lean into the packaging here. Let's do maybe a lighter shade of pink. Okay, and then for the other end, we'll do a blue. And we'll lighten that one up as well, just to see how it looks before we commit to this solid color here. So I'm just gonna click and drag Oh, that's actually way better than I thought. It's kind of got like a cotton candy feel to it. I love that. I think we're gonna go with that. Um, and so one thing that I will do is, this isn't quite looking as centered as I would like, so I'm gonna do Control or Command T, and we're just gonna nudge this to the center here, hit Enter, and then I think the lid, huh, let's move the lid too, just a little bit. To the left there, okay. All right, we're gonna work with that for now and then let's go ahead and turn on our blues and we'll start working with these pieces here. 
Now that I'm looking at this, I do think I want our gradient to be a little more dramatic. So I'm gonna recreate that layer and let's just make a slightly shorter stroke for that. Yeah, I like that. We'll go even smaller. There we go. Yep, that's looking great. So now with our blue pieces turned on, let's expand our folder over here. And now we can individually manipulate each of these. And I'm also going to use this time to kind of go through and decide if there are any pieces that just don't look that good and I want to eliminate altogether. Um, so let's start with this one. I know eight looks really good. So what I'm going to do is hit control or command T. And this is, as I said earlier, going to allow us to drag it around. We can also rotate it. So if you really like the way a particular piece looks, you could even just duplicate that layer and rotate it and then it will look completely different. Maybe resize it a little bit and you won't even be able to tell that it's the same piece of cereal. So we're just gonna start by kind of placing these. I'm gonna work in this area. And then once I'm happy with how that looks, we'll kind of go around the edges here and maybe add some of those blurrier pieces. Not super thrilled with this blue nine. So I'm gonna turn that off for now and just kind of continue on with what we've got. I think the placement of that actually looks pretty good. So now let's move this one. Since this one's smaller, I'm just going to kind of place it off in the distance here and just see how we like that. And I do expect to kind of move more of these around as we bring in the different colors. So I'm just kind of using the blue as a base right now. Maybe we'll give this one a little rotation there. Yeah, because I like the way this one's kind of facing down and then this one's kind of facing up to kind of frame our packaging there. So we'll see what this one looks like. So this one, I just don't love how the edges turned out and just not a fan of that piece overall. So I think I'm actually just gonna delete that layer help us clean things up a little bit. And then three, this one looks great. I'll just kind of remain in this general area for right now. Just give these a little rotation. And again, I'm just hitting Control or Command T on whichever layer I want to move. See, there's a blurry piece, but that one actually looks pretty decent and I think we could even further refine these edges once we go in for the final retouch. So I'm gonna leave that one there for now and then that just leaves us with this one which I don't think we need because we have a very similar piece here and the edges just look a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So let's go ahead and, did we wanna keep this one? This one's not bad actually. We'll keep this one for now. Let's just maybe put it down here give it a little rotation and we'll just work with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this folder. Let's now turn on our yellow folder. I'm gonna expand these and then I'm just gonna go through and do the same thing. Just gonna kind of organize each color one at a time and then I'll look at the image as a whole and see if anything else needs to be moved around. So again, as I'm working through each color, I'm just going to turn off anything that I'm not actively working on. That way I can just focus on moving one piece at a time. And one thing that I would like to note is now that we're bringing in another color, we could even play around with kind of layering them on top of each other, just to give it a little more of a natural aesthetic and just see how that looks when we've got some different colors uh, layered on top of each other. So you'll notice I'm also kind of starting to place pieces coming in from the edge of the frame that just kind of makes it look like things continue outside of what was captured within our frame here. And then something else that I was thinking about is let's move this one. Say for example, we wanted a piece of cereal to look like it's coming from either inside of the jar or from behind the jar. I'm just going to take this piece and place it underneath our product layer. And now when I go to transform this, we can see now it looks like it's just kind of peeking out of our top edge there. So that can make it look like they're actually flying out of the inside of the container, which is really cool.
Okay, so we've got all of our cereal pieces placed now. And what I'm thinking is now we can kind of go through and add some shape to this. So I'm imagining we'll have more of these pieces kind of near the bottom and then kind of spreading out into the opposite directions as they get higher away from the product. So I'm gonna work through that now to see if we can just add some direction to some of these pieces and then we'll kind of get into cleaning up the product and the lid and adding some final touches. So I'm now on my third time going through and kind of moving around each individual piece and each time I'm getting a little bit closer to the look that I'm going for. So as I'm moving around the pieces for the third time now, I'm gonna be focusing on making sure that they're closer together near the mouth of the jar here. And then as they kind of jump out of the top here, I want them to spread out and create more distance between each piece. So I'm just getting a little bit closer to making this look more realistic each time I do this. Uh, but this is just kind of the nature of a project like this. It takes just a lot of playing around and seeing what looks best until you get closer and closer to that final look that you're going for. So now that things are starting to look just a little bit more organized and realistic, let's go through some of these together. So now I'm working on the purple pieces again. And what I'm trying to do in this area is to just layer up a bunch of different colors underneath the mouth of the jar here. But before I do that, I'll hit Control or Command J to make a copy of that piece, move one of them underneath the jar layer. Here, let's move, let's turn this one off for now so we can see what's going on with that one. Yeah, so I like having multiple colors looking like they're coming out of the jar. And then if we turn on this one, let's do Command T and we're just going to kind of rotate it a bit so that it doesn't look like the exact same piece that we have you know coming out of the mouth of the jar there okay and then let's do the rest of the purples all right so i'm kind of aiming to have everything going up to toward the top left of the image. So I'm just kind of thinking about gradually having the pieces kind of float that way. Um, and I have gotten rid of some of the blurrier pieces. I just didn't like what they were adding to the photo. I like the nice crisp ones that are nice and in focus. And at this point, I'm just playing around with different ways that I can layer some of the colors together. And then let's move this one so that we don't have too many of the purple ones kind of clustered together. Okay. Now let's take a look at the greens. We'll turn those on and then let's just go back and do one at a time. That one actually looks pretty good there, but since we have it on this side, the next one, I, yeah, I want it to be kind of over here so that again, we have more of the pieces kind of heading up to the left-hand side of the image. And I'll move this one over there as well. Um, I think we'll eliminate that one. That's not needed. This little tiny one, I don't think we need anymore. Yeah, and then this one, I like kind of having, having it come from the edge of the frame like that. And then there's a nice crisp one. Let's kind of layer this one up in the center with these two pieces. Yeah, this is just starting to look much more natural. It's organized, but in kind of a chaotic, eye-catching way, because you don't want it to look super random, um, but you also don't want everything to look like it was intentionally placed. So that's just kind of why this is a lot of trial and error as we move all the separate pieces around. Now the final thing I want to do here is I kind of bring all these pieces together is I've turned everything off and I'm just going through each individual piece now. And if I like the way that piece looks, I'm making a copy of it by hitting Control J 
and then I'm gonna drag it into this folder that I've created called extras. And I'm going to use those to add more color and more serial pieces to the overall image because I don't have quite as many nice ones as I would like. So I'm gonna go into this extras folder once all of the other ones have been turned back on and then just kind of place those around to add the extra fill, the extra color that I want. And we can also rotate and resize them to make them look a little bit different than the original ones. And then that should really help us bring things together. All right guys, so this is where we've ended up with the placement of all of the cereal pieces. I may go through and play around with these a little bit more, but for the sake of time, let's move on to the next thing, which is I would like to add a bit of a subtle glow behind the product and the cereal pieces here. So to do that, let's create a new layer and we're going to place it on top of our gradient layer, but below the product and all of the cereal pieces. And we're just gonna call this glow. And then I'm gonna grab my brush tool, hitting B on my keyboard for the shortcut. And then let's change this back to the default, flip it for a white brush. And then I just like to use the opacity and flow on 100%, just so that I can see exactly where this glow is landing. And then once we're happy with the placement, we can come and adjust the opacity over here on the right. So I'm gonna make this brush pretty big. And then we just kind of want it behind the product here. So let's just click. And we can see that it added a pretty dramatic glow there. Actually not a bad look, but I do like it a little bit more subtle than that. So I'm just going to drag the opacity down just to make it a little more subtle. Maybe somewhere around here, 65. Um, let's go with that, that looks good. So then here is the before the glow and here is the after. So it really helps that product pop off the page. The next thing that I want to do, and this is really the benefit of separating each individual element of your images, is I want to brighten up the product packaging. So I'm gonna click here on my product layer and then let's do this. There's a few different ways that we can do this. I'm gonna start with, let's do a levels layer. And then I'm going to click on this icon here. This is going to clip it to the product so that it doesn't affect any other part of the image as I'm making these adjustments. It's only clipped right here to the um, separated product that we created earlier. So now when I make adjustments, you can see it's only affecting the packaging there. So I'm gonna pull that up pretty high right there just to brighten things up. And then let's do the exact same thing for our lid. We'll do a levels layer, make sure that you clip it. And let's just see if we can brighten that up nicely to match. Perfect. Okay, and then for the cereal pieces, I think I'd like to brighten some of these up as well. So I have the cereal pieces divided into two folders here. These are the ones that are kind of above the jar and these are the ones that we kind of placed behind. So let's just start by creating a new levels layer for that. And then let's just clip it to our cereal folder and kind of watch what happens here. It's just brightening those pieces of cereal. Um, that are technically above our product packaging there. Okay. And then let's just actually duplicate this layer by hitting Control J. And then I'm going to drag this down here right above the other serial pieces that we're working with. Um, and go ahead and clip it to that. And now we can see it brightened up those remaining pieces as well. So at this stage, this is where I would typically just add a new layer here and use this for all of my retouching, um, anything with the clone stamp tool or the brush tool. So again, just to save some time, I'm going to be going in with our spot healing brush tool and just kind of clicking around and cleaning up any of these, you know, this dust or discoloration, just kind of go through and make sure the packaging is nice and clean. And then I'll also take my brush tool. We'll grab a sample by holding the Alt or Option key. 
And then I'm going to work to kind of just paint over the uneven areas to blend all these colors together a little bit more nicely. Um, but this, this portion of the process takes quite a bit longer and I'd like to avoid <laughs> this turning into a two or three hour tutorial. So I'm gonna go through and do that and then if there's one final thing that I like to do, sometimes I'd like to go back in and add some stars to maybe either the pieces of cereal in this case or to the packaging itself. So I can't remember exactly where I got this, but a couple years back, I just found a tutorial on YouTube on how to create this sparkle brush effect. So if we just turn this all the way up, switch this back to white, if you click, you can create these, you know, glimmering star effects and you can adjust the rotation so that you can get it at a different angle, adjust the size of the brush using your bracket keys, and just kind of go through and add something a little extra. So once I'm all done with the retouching process and I'm happy with things like the color and the brightness, I'll finally go through and maybe add some stars, but just wanted to show you guys how I do that. Um, but that about wraps up the editing process for this. I know this was a bit of a heavy process. It's partially because there were just so many cereal pieces to work with, um, but I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to check out the in-studio tutorial of how I pulled this together if you guys missed that. But again, happy to answer any questions you have and I'll see you guys in the next video.